I now welcome Elizabeth. Thank you. That felt very dramatic there. Thank you, Steve. It comes no surprise that, yes, I had noticed the cake. So thank you. And many happy returns of the day to you, Anna. We hope you enjoyed celebrating your birthday and all the wonderful things you are to so many people. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will start with singing um, Alleluia, Alleluia. It will be on the screens, but if you want the books, it's 295. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move, and all we are is known to you. The depths of fear and the heights of hope, and the endlessness of our need for love. Loving God, we adore you. In you is space and breadth and room for each of us to be ourselves, to stretch and breathe, to laugh and weep, and sound the songs we love to sing. Loving God, we adore you. In you is time and strength to wait, for each of us to dare to dream and trust our hope 
that you are love which does not end, but ever holds us safe and close. Loving God, we adore you. In you we find ourselves fulfilled, the unknown God, unseen, unnamed, the great I am who is for us, the word of life made flesh come true. Loving God, we adore you. For fearing the unknown and failing to search and seek after truth. Good Lord, forgive us. For fearing the faith of others and limiting your love to people like us. Good Lord, forgive us. For being content with the outward forms of religion and being afraid to change for good. Good Lord, forgive us for placing our trust in money and status and failing to worship in openness and trust. Good Lord, forgive us. The Lord is good and quick to forgive. Let us trust in his word and make a new start to the glory of God. God of grace, we rest in you. Though we have feared you in the unknown and have been daunted by your silence, yet you have brought us through fire and water into a spacious place where we are consoled by your presence, comforted by your strength and consoled by your truth. You have given us life again, and we praise you, God of love and grace. Come and hear what the Lord has done, the unknown God, unseen, unnamed. He has brought into being all that is, all peoples and all nations, and time and space for all to live and room to search for truth and love. We have heard, and now we believe. Come and hear what the Lord has done, the unknown God, unseen, unnamed. He has shown his face in Jesus Christ, a man who spoke and danced a man who wept and smiled, a man who brings new life from grief and death. We have heard and now we believe. Come and hear what the Lord has done, the unknown God, unseen, unnamed. He has breathed a Holy Spirit a spirit of wisdom and strength, a spirit of freedom and life, a spirit who lifts our hearts to sing. We have heard and now we believe. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We'll now continue our worship with the worship song, Blessed Be Your Name. Oh, blessed be your name, Yahweh. 
Amen. We will now hear our scripture readings for today. Pearl, all right, you've got your sunglasses, Pearl. Our first reading, the Old Testament reading, is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, beginning to read at first verse 1 through to 8. Love the Lord your God. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan to possess, so that you your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today <coughs> are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them onto your foreheads. Our Gospel reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At the time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Amen. And we trust that the Lord will help us to understand these words we've just heard. So as I was preparing um, the order of service the other day, I was in the office at work and um, as you may have started to pick up the idea is being like children. So I said to my colleague, I said, right, what was your, go on, what hymn shall I have that represents, he's a good one from our childhood? And she said, has to be all things bright and beautiful. So we're now going to go back to our um, school assembly days and we are going to sing beautifully, probably out of key if we're doing it truly like wonderful children. We're going to sing all things bright and beautiful. And that's a hundred, number a hundred in the in the singing the faith.
And let's be thankful you get to sit on nice comfy seats and not a floor or a wooden um, bench right now. A few weeks ago, I was going through a box of old photos. I'm sure most of us have at least some photos. Um, probably some of you are very organized and have them all labeled in nice albums. I have a box. And these are, it's interesting though, because my photos of my son are neatly labeled in albums. From my childhood, a box. But there we go. Um, but I was sorting through a box of photos that had come from my grandparents' house. And it was literally photos from me as a baby, just a few weeks old, in my mother's arms, right up until like my, my graduation and a few beyond that. But I came across one photograph of myself, and it was at a birthday party, my birthday party at my parents' house. And I was surrounded by friends, and I think it must have been about my seventh or my eighth birthday, which is quite significant because that is the age at which my son is now. But I looked at this little girl in the photo, and she was so full of joy. She was clearly mid-dance, and she was waving her dress around, and she had the biggest smile on her face and she didn't care about anything or anyone she was in that moment and I thought where did you go what happened to you my beautiful precious little girl who just knew who she was who just knew what brought her joy who just loved to sing and dance and have fun there was that little girl before the world got in. Before she started to listen to the lies, whether consciously or subconsciously, that she was being fed. I looked at her and I thought, there's a little girl in her purest form who exactly as God made her to be. Little girl, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. So what did we love to do as children? As I said, I loved to dance. I danced all the time. I could recreate a Kylie Minogue video like that, move by move. Still can for some of them. It was a regular thing in our house. My dad would shout up the stairs, will you stop it? You're going to come through the ceiling. Okay. I never did. I loved to play with my teddy bears. I loved to mother them. I loved to take care of them. Sometimes there was barely enough room in my bed for me because they had to have enough space to be comfortable. My son does the same. I never tell him to move them. He can sleep on the edge, he'll be fine. Because that's how he's learning to care. I used to play being a teacher. <laughs> I used to have the books in baskets neatly lined up. I also used to play at being a hairdresser until once, and it still pains me greatly, I decided to cut the fur of my favourite teddy bear. <laughs> I knew you'd feel my pain. It's still, it's still talked about in our family. Do you remember when you cut Big Ted's hair? Yes, she still has the bald patch to this day. I used to always change my bedroom into a house because I was so grown up and independent that I didn't need the rest of the family in the house. I had a little living area. I used to have food hidden in my wardrobe until my mom found out and took it off me. But I used to love creating things. Mess was always around me. Messy, messy, messy. Because I was always creating something. I was always in some imaginative world. I used to love to read. I'd get lost in a book for hours and hours and hours. 
I used to love going outside and pretending I was Annika Rice on Challenge Annika. I used to have a little Walkman on because that was like my headset and I used to run around the garden trying to find the clues that I'd hidden five minutes before. But I loved that sense of adventure. I used to love drama and putting on plays and getting my family to sit down and watch intently everything I'd worked hard on. There's a wonderful video of me as a child doing some elaborate dance, and then it pans to my family, and they're all sat there with this very polite, bored look on their face. It's hilarious to watch now. But then over time, I used to take up space. I used to be loud and big, and then the world got in and told me to shh, just be, just shush, just less, just be smaller, be less of you, be less childlike. You're growing up now. You're growing up, you have to be an adult, you have to be responsible, and you have to be who the world tells you to be, Elizabeth. So I did. I did. I tried really hard, really hard to fit into the box that the world wanted me to be in. I was very, very obedient at school, very, very obedient. I was always one of those children that did the right thing did the right thing, but, but why did I do the right thing? The other day, Samuel came home from school and we were sharing over dinner what had gone on. And he said that it had been a bit loud in class and only four of the children had managed to get their full lunch time. And I said, oh, okay, tell me more. And he said, oh, don't worry, Mum, I was one of the four. And I said, well, why? What happened? And he said, well, the class were being really loud and not listening. And he says, and then I saw the teacher standing there like this. And he's probably very used to that, that position, my son. And he said, so I just knew that she wanted our attention. So I just sat there nicely. And I said, oh, okay. He said, and then a couple of others did. He said... So the teacher said, you're doing the right thing, so off you go. You can go out for lunch. So I said, oh, right, OK. I said, why did you do that, Samuel? Why, why did you make that decision? And he said, because I wanted to make the teacher's life nice. And I said, oh, that's really kind of you. But what about you? How did it benefit you to do the right thing that you instinctively knew to do? And in the wisdom of my little boy has, he said, you know what, Mum, I've never thought of it. And I said, well, think about it. Think about the decisions you make. Don't just do things because you think it's the right thing. Decide why it's the right thing. And then he said, well, I got to do what I wanted for a whole hour outside. I said, yeah, it gave you freedom. Your obedience and your knowing to do the right thing led to you being blessed. And then he started talking to me about Pokemon and things, and I, it, it, I lost it a little bit, I'll be honest. But who were we before the world got in? Who were we before we started to hear people telling us what we should and shouldn't do? As followers of Christ, we have, our, we have our rule book, as we heard in Deuteronomy. We have the commandments, we have the laws of how we should live our lives. Do we really need another set of rules that the world tells us we live by? Do we approach life as children or adults? There's a difference on a, on a WhatsApp group that I'm part of Somebody asked the question, are we to be childlike or childish? And someone said, is there a difference? Well, I think there is. I think there's a big difference between being childlike and being childish. I don't think anything positive comes from being childish, but being childlike, well, that's a different question. Because if we look at the natural qualities and characteristics of children that they're born with and that they have if, you know, if they are able to grow with good guidance and God's love and boundaries and confidence and all these. These are some of the characteristics I think children are born with. They're loving. 
They're trusting. There's an innocence about them. They're secure in who they are because they haven't thought of being anything else. They're carefree and playful. They're honest. They're teachable. They're teachable. Children are wide-eyed with wonders at new discoveries. There's lots of wows with children. Children are unbiased and not judgmental. They're growing and they're relational and they're creative. And they're all those things instinctively. And then as we start to get older, we're taught another way. But Jesus said, unless you become as a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So maybe that's part of the challenge that we are facing today. Maybe that's part of the challenge that God is giving us. Maybe, and this is, a, this is a, a post I saw this week, and it said, there is a call to the followers of Jesus to be receptive and responsive, fluid and fast to respond, amoeba-like and adaptable, surrendered and sensitive and resilient, tender and teachable, meek and kind, non-prescriptive and non-judgmental, light on their feet and loosely attached to things, totally reliant on the Holy Spirit and unhurried. Now, I don't know about you, but as I, as I read through that and compare that with the characteristics of a child, I feel like I have a bit of more understanding of what Jesus actually meant, that if I want to enter the kingdom, I have to become as a child. I have to become more loving, more carefree, more playful, more honest, more teachable. I don't know it all. I don't want to. I want to keep learning. I heard a podcast this week and it was about saying yes to God. And this lady said she hasn't made a decision in 25 years because she's just said yes to God and let him do the rest. Wow. Imagine that. Just say yes. You don't need to know. And then find out what the question actually was. Just say yes to God. Yeah, I'm here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Some of the best journeys of my life have started off with a simple yes. Here I am. I don't need to know the plan. He does. If I keep my eyes on him, he will lead me well. I always remember taking my son swimming for the first time. And I held him in front of me and as we stepped down into the little pool and I was, I'd got him held onto me in front of me And he started to panic a little bit as we got in. So I turned him around so he could see me. And he was fine. Nothing changed about those circumstances. He was still going into water. He was still going into an unknown environment for him. Different sounds, different smells, different feels. But simply being able to see me, his mom, changed everything for him. I see him come out of school, out of school, out of his little door and line up on the playground with the other children and I always know the first thing he'll do, he'll do a quick scan looking for mum. And I always stand in the same place. Because if I don't, like the other day, I was, I was a couple of minutes later than normal. I'm usually there waiting. But I was, his class were already out and I saw him scan and he went straight to the spot where mum usually is and she wasn't there. And for a second I saw a panic. So I waved, woo, I'm here! And the relief was there. A few weeks ago, we took him, I took him to Legoland for his birthday. And there's a fantastic area where it's um, the mini world. So they've recreated cities around the world in Lego. And he was over by the wand display. And I, I was literally this far away behind him. And I had got my eye on him the whole time. I knew exactly where he was. 
But he turned to look at me, and instead of turning left, he turned right. So when he turned, he couldn't see me. And I saw the instant panic in his face, and I was like, I'm here. I've got you. He's like, I couldn't see you. But I could see you. I could see you. And I think sometimes that's as children, isn't it? Children love to go off and explore their zone, but they always want to come back and know where their grown-up is. You watch them on the playground, you watch them on, you know, when they're climbing and your heart's in your mouth because it looks far too high, and, but they're just enjoying it, they're just embracing it, but they'll always come back and check you there. They'll always come back and check you are there. In Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 10, we read, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and wherever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Very often children will say, I can't do that, I'm too young. How many times do we still say that to God now? Oh, no, not me. You can't possibly mean me. I can't do that. But if God has planted that seed in you and given you that gift, you can. So maybe this week we need to think about who we were before the world got in. What were those God-given gifts and joys that God had placed in you as a child? What made you laugh? Playground swings. Still love them. Still love them. I'm very glad now that my son is an age where he can just swing by himself and I can sit on the swing next to him. Because when he used to say, Mom, you need to push me, and I'd think, I just want to play. So now I sit on the swing next to him and go higher and higher and higher. Because I can. When was the last time you did something that just brought you pure joy? When was the last time, if you love to dance, that you just dance? In the kitchen, in the living room, in the supermarket, wherever you want. If you love to sing as a child, do you still sing? Or you're a little bit self-conscious now because, well, I'm not that good and it might be a bit out of tune. Children don't care. When was the last time did you as a child love to be creative and do painting? When was the last time you bought some paints and just painted something without worrying that it's, well, it might not be perfect and nobody would want to see it? And? When was the last time you just went out into the garden and just enjoyed the space? Just had fun in your garden? I bet some of you spend hours making your gardens look beautiful and pristine. But do you actually enjoy them? Do you get time to sit and play and have fun? Are we open to being childlike to God's plans for us? Are we ready to just say yes? No, what was the question? Are we ready to rediscover who God created us to be? Amen. We're now going to sing just the most perfect worship song for this moment, and it's Run to the Father. If you do nothing else this week, run to Father.
So during our prayers of intercession, we lift up to, to God all of those in our hearts and in our thoughts this week who we know need that extra touch from God. Today is also Further Education Sunday. And um, so we lift up those within our church family and our communities who are going through further education. I'm not just going to say young people. Education is for all of all ages. But we pray for those institutions. We pray for the, for the local high school, for those who are starting A-level exams and are going through all that over the next couple of weeks. For those who are getting ready to start really new big chapters as they finish their formal education and go off onto, to university or apprenticeships or whatever God has got planned for them. We pray for the staff in those places that they would have God's wisdom to guide, teach and encourage the young people and their students in their care. So let us pray. Let us pray for the mission of the church, for the fulfilment of her calling to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Saving God, we pray for those like Paul who witnessed the gospel by word and deed amongst strangers. We pray for evangelists and missionaries, for teachers and preachers, for aid workers in desperate situations. for those on the front lines of war situations around the world who are still reaching out and bringing the good news in the worst of situations. We pray for ourselves that in our conversations and dealings with people we meet on a day-to-day -day basis. Make us bold to spread the good news wherever we go. Spirit of God, give us wisdom, courage and love that we may be true apostles of Christ. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all peoples praise you. Loving God, make us one. Make us one with the African Christian praying for peace. With the Chinese Christian praying for freedom. For the South American Christian praying for justice. With the Asian Christian praying for food. Unite us in faith. Unite us in love. Loving God, make us one with the sick praying for healing, with the guilt-ridden praying for forgiveness, with the bewildered praying for guidance, with the bereaved praying for comfort. Unite us in faith, Unite us in love. Loving God, make us one in our prayers for church unity, in our concern for the world, in our service to the community, in our witness to your love. Unite us in faith, unite us in love. Loving God, make us one to love and care for one another, to treat each other with tolerance and respect, to learn from one another and grow together, 
that we may truly worship and serve you. Unite us in faith, unite us in love. We pray in the name of him to whom we have been entrusted. In the name of Yeshua, your son, our brother and our saviour. Amen. And we will now join together and sing number 21 in singing the faith, born in song. Go in the love of God, who will keep you through any adversity. Go in the peace of Christ, who will sustain you when you are trampled by others. Go in the light of the Spirit, who will guide you through the entanglements of sin, that the glory of God may be revealed in you, this day and forever. Amen. Amen.